Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha, Chodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men that I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And pretty much this is going to be a lesson in the general sense of fearing the Lord. All right. Because no matter how long you are in the truth for or how short you are in the truth for, be grateful that you learned this truth from the men of the Lord, which are the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. All right. You know, never forget the will of the Lord, which is to pretty much serve him forever and to make your body a living sacrifice. All right. No matter how you got to do that. Now, this is Proverbs, the first chapter and verse seven. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So that is the true knowledge. Now, we know the our wisdom as Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native American Indians pursuant to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter four, verses five and six is the law, statutes and commandments that's recorded in the scriptures. Right. But also the fear of the Lord. All right. Not to bow down to no heathen, no matter what positions of difficulty or straits you're in. You must always fear the Lord. You must always do what the Lord, Yahweh, as well as his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, commanded us to do. All right. And let's go into this word fear real quick. Strong's H3374. Yerah. Yerah. Okay. And it says what? Fear, terror, fearing. Because when you read in the scriptures, you know, there's a consequence if you know the will of the Lord, especially if you make a vow or an oath to the Lord to serve him forever, you know, to um, push forth this gospel. You know, you put your hand to the plow, right? So you know that the Lord will destroy an individual that breaks that oath. You know, the Lord will count you as a fool, Right? It's all recorded in the scriptures, Old and New Testament. It says, awesome or terrifying thing, ob object causing fear. Because who has the issues of life and death? The heavenly father, Yahweh. All right. He's in control of everything in the universe, especially on the planet Earth. None of us could do anything un unless the heavenly father, Yahweh, sanction it. Right. So you don't want to do something that's going to put you on the heavenly father's bad side although it would be his will anyway it says fear of god right respect reverence piety it says revered so if you fear the lord you will respect him enough to do what he said which is to what worship his son yahweh shai and what did yahweh shai say to go out on the highways and byways and bid the elect to the marriage all right. That, that's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to give the warning. We're supposed to be prophesying. All right. Telling our people these prophecies is going to come to pass before it comes to pass. All right. So now let's jump back. Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So that's the beginning of knowledge. All right. Because the fear of the Lord shows what? The gift of faith that we have through Yahweh Shai. All right, to be able to serve him, to have the Racha Kodash, which is the Holy Spirit and the Lashuan Kodash, all right, to do what we're doing. You know, any anything that we do is not of ourselves. So we can't boast in ourselves because faith, Ephesians 2 and 8, is a gift from the Heavenly Father to His Son, right? We understand that when you read Revelation 3 and 20, Yahweh Shai has to be supping with you. Meaning the only way you can understand these scriptures is through his men, but it's by Yahweh Shai. All right. So it says, but fools, who's the fools? All right. Two thirds of the nation of Israel pursuing the Zechariah 13 and 8. That's prophesied to be destroyed. They're fools. All right. What makes them fools? Because they despise this word. They don't take heed to this word. They rather follow the way of the heathen. And keep the customs of the heathen and worship the gods of the heathen 
instead of serving their own God, which is who? Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. All right. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And that's the problem with our people. Our people are so infatuated with the cultures of the heathen, the customs of the heathen, the philosophies of the heathen, instead of their own customs, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, and following this Bible. That's what's going to get them destroyed. All right? Let's get another one. This is Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. The fear of the Lord. Because remember, this is the topic. The topic is the fear of the Lord. If you fear the Lord, you will do what he commanded. All right? You shouldn't have somebody have to curse you out. You being a grown man, you know the will of the Lord by now. You're watching the live streams. You're tuning in to lessons. You, you're probably already doing live streams and lessons. All right? You, you tuning in. You're going to the, um, the, the Great Millstone Camps. Right? But you got to keep on doing it, though. You know, you got to keep up the same momentum. Because once you stop glorifying the Lord, what else do you have in this world? All right? And the Lord will destroy you for stop doing his will. Right? Proverbs 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. All right? And what's evil? Not listening to the orders that the men of the Lord set up, which is the apostles of Great Millstone. All right? The apostles of Great Millstone, that's who the Lord decided to, you know, um, spread this gospel to, all right, to wake us up. And it's through them we was able to wake up through Yahweh Shai, all right? It says it's to hate evil, and that's what's going on in this world. It's nothing but evil. But who's to blame for that? The so-called white man in the sea lot, which are the biblical Edomites according to the scriptures. That was prophesied to be ruling in these last days. That's why evil is abound everywhere. It says pride. The Lord hates pride, man. The scriptures tell you what. Pride goes before destruction. A lot of these people are sinning against the Lord. You know, talking about our people. Because what? They have a lack of respect for the Lord. Because if you respect somebody, you will fear them enough to do what they said. All right? It says an arrogancy, right? Being boastful in themselves. You have a lot of that going on within the nation of Israel. It says, in the evil way, in the forward mouth, do I hate. So the Lord is explaining what? The things that he hates. So you don't want to become these examples over time because you get complacent. You know, you get prideful. You think that the Lord can't sift you out of the truth. Remember what Yahweh Shai told Peter. He said, Satan have, you know, Satan have desired to sift you out of the truth. And I was the head, you know, um, disciple that became an apostle. So if he can want to do that to him, how much more us underneath Peter, right? Let's get another one. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It says, let us hear the, the conclusion of the whole matter. The conclusion meaning what? The end. Right. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. And the reason why we say Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, because you got guys that, oh, every time, you know, the word Lord there is talking about Yahweh. Yeah, we understand that. But also Yahweh said to worship his son when you're dealing with the transfiguration. All right. He said, worship my son, who I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Meaning what? Take heed to what he commands. We're supposed to worship Yahweh Shai. All right? It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh Bashem Shai and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. All right? And it first begins where? With the Israelite man. All right? This is the whole duty of the Israelite man. Now, in the kingdom of heaven, all heathen is going to keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of their ability. The reason why I say to the best of their ability, because the heathen is not going to be changed like the elect of the nation of Israel. And then ultimately all Israel when they come back in the kingdom. All right. Being in the flesh, that means that you're prone to sin. All right. So in the kingdom, under our authority, we're going to implement the law, statutes and commandments. All right. So now let's get another one. This is Psalms 50, 51 and 11. 
Because when you read in Isaiah the 60th chapter, right? Isaiah 16, 12, it says what? The nation that shall not serve thee in the kingdom of heaven shall perish. So they're going to have the fear of the Lord too. Because they're going to understand that, you know, the Israelites now were sovereign. Now we have the authority of the planet earth. Because the earth is our inheritance. And when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's going to give us the power to take down our enemies. We're going to be indestructible. All right? We're going to be all powerful. Right? We're going to be immortal. We're going to get them extraterrestrial bodies. Right? So the heathen, they're going to fear us. Because we're going to be making an example out of them. The ones that want to be rebellious. You know, they want to be rebels. Even if they're rebelling in their mind, we're going to put them to death. We're going to show you the example. Look, if you don't serve Yahweh and Yahweh Shai by listening to us, this is what's going to happen to you. So they're going to have the fear of the Lord. All right. Psalms 51 11. It says, cast me not away from thy presence. And this is a horrible thing. You know, you don't want this to happen to you. You know, the Lord, he might put you in a position of difficulty. You know, you might be teaching by yourself, but. Just remember to serve Yahweh while Yahweh Shai in truth and sincerity. You know, don't don't get offended at men. Right? Because the scriptures say what? You know, let let no man take thy crown. So that's the mindset you want to be in. You want to be in a headstrong mindset through prayer. You know, if you choose to fast, you know, do that as well. All right. But never make this truth about your emotions. All right. Make this truth about serving Yahweh and Yahweh Shai and take heed to the men that he set up before you, which happen to be who? The apostles, the elders of Great Millstone. All right. Because if the Lord catches you away from his presence, now you're back in the world. You know, you're going to go back to the old man, believing in whatever philosophies or religions you was a part of. All right. You're going to probably grow your hair long. <laughs> you know, you might get get dreadlocks, all kind of bad things that happen to you, all right? This truth is all we have. Everything in this world is completely temporal. It can be taken from you at any time, including your life, your woman, your job, everything that makes you happy, it can be taken away, all right? So us as the elect of the nation of Israel, we look forward to the kingdom of heaven, an everlasting kingdom where we are immortal, you know, our rulership is forever. Our people are happy forever. Our people is not under the curses of Deuteronomy 28 no more. That's the type of lifestyle we want. All right. But before that happens, we got to endure to the end. We got to earn that. All right. So it says Psalms 51 11. And how are we going to earn that? By denying that chip. But before the chip come, we got to continue to keep on spreading this gospel. He that endure from to the end the same shall be saved. So it ain't over yet. Psalms 51 11, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. All right. We have the Holy Spirit, which is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures through Yahweh Shah's blood and sacrifice. All right. That's how we have the Holy Spirit to be able to break down these scriptures, to be able to do our videos, to be able to do our live streams. All right. To, to be able to just be alive, period. That's all through Yahweh Shai, all right? If it wasn't for what Yahweh Shai did for us, Isaiah 1 and 9, we should have been at Sodom and Gomorrah, right? So you don't want that to happen to you, man, all right? Just always remember the will of the Lord. You know, a brother may rebuke you. Hey, just, just take it. If you're wrong, then take it. Examine yourself. You know, say, Salak, your brother. The scriptures give you examples. A just man fall the seventh time, and then he get back up. Get back up. Because you have grace and mercy through Yahweh Shai. So there ain't no point in you falling. Because once you fall and stay down, that's it. That's the end of your story. You're going to be destroyed. You don't want that to happen to you. All right? So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it with that. Let's go to another one. All right? So this is Matthew 17 to 5. Because you have a lot of people, they don't really understand these scriptures. They don't really understand the depth of these scriptures. You got people that will say, oh, in the New Testament, Yahweh or the, or the God of Israel never commanded the Israelites to worship Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. You know, you got people that look at Yahweh Shai like he was just a prophet. He was just a regular man, you know, 
You either got to camp out there, Sakari. They call him a black identity extremist, you know? Like, like if he's like if he's like a Nat Turner character. No, man. This is the son of man. This is the only begotten son. This is the Messiah. This is the first spirit that the Heavenly Father created by himself. The only begotten spirit. All right? And through Yahweh Shai, by the will of Yahweh, everything was created. He is to be worshipped. All right? Matthew 17 and 5. This is what Yahweh said. It says, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud. We go into this word cloud, right? The word there is nef, nefeli, right? And what does it say? A cloud. Use of the cloud which led the Israelites in the wilderness. Now, if you've been watching the videos of Great Millstone, you understand that it's not talking about literal clouds, all right? It's not talking about that. It, the cloud that it's talking about is the Hebrew word, Marikab, which is talking about actual vehicle. In this case, it's talking about a so-called UFO. UFO just stands for unidentifiable flying object. When you read the scriptures, there's accounts of UFOs all throughout the scriptures. How are the Israelites going to receive salvation in this lifetime? By their so-called UFOs. That's how Yahweh Shai is coming back. That's how his body was risen on the third day. Acts the first chapter. All right. So this is talking about a so-called UFO. That's what led us to the wilderness. If you could receive that. So it says a bright cloud overshadowed them. So it's a very big so-called UFO, right? Chariots of Israel. How are we going to receive salvation in this lifetime? Lord willing, we'd be a part of the elect. Because only the elect is going to receive salvation. All right? So it says, and, a, and, a, and behold... A voice out of the cloud. So it's a voice out of the cloud, out of the vehicle, right? Which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. That's what Yahweh said, all right? Yahweh said to worship Yahweh Shai. Hear ye him, meaning what? Take heed to what he's saying, all right? He said, I am well pleased because Yahweh Shai did the will of Yahweh which is to be the ultimate sacrifice, all right? And through his blood, we have atonement of sins. We have grace and mercy through Yahweh Shai, all right? So that's what the Heavenly Father said, to worship Yahweh Shai, because the first eight verses is dealing with what? The transfiguration. Remember, the apostles, they was like, you know, should we make a house to, you know, our Moses, Elijah, and you? No, Yahweh Shai is above the prophets, all right? And, and the law, he's above that. And he replaced the Levitical priesthood through the order of Melchizedek. All right? So always remember that. In the New Testament, Yahweh said to worship Yahweh Shai. So this is what Yahweh Shai said now. Um, John 21 and 15. So when they had dined, right? They had dinner. Yahweh Shai saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Who's the lambs? The elect of the nation of Israel. All right. It says, He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me. He saith unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. So, Yahweh Shai don't care about what you confess and what your lips. It's all about action. You got to be a doer of the word unto the end till he come or until you put the death by guillotine for rejecting the RFID chip implant, which is that mark of the beast. So it says, he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved. If somebody keep asking you the same shit over and over again, you, you're going to get upset. You're going to look at this person like, like, yo, you, you trying to challenge me or something? What's going on here? Right. So Peter, he was grieved. He was getting annoyed. And this is his response. Because he said unto him, the third time, lovest thou me. That's Yahweh Shai. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh Shai, save unto him, feed my sheep. So the Yahweh Shai, don't, he doesn't give a damn about what you confess with your lips. You have to be a doer. Faith without works is dead. You display your faith through your actions, all right? You say that you repent, 
it has to be shown through your actions. Now, we're not perfect, all right? We're still in the flesh. We're going to sin, but don't sin willingly, all right? Being under grace and mercy is not an excuse to eat pork or follow the way of the heathen, all right? So now let's get this. Because through this grace and mercy period, you are supposed to use that to glorify the Lord to the best of your ability. Matthew 22 and 8, right? Because this is what Yahweh Shai said to do, right? Yahweh said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him, whom I am well pleased. So this is what Yahweh Shai is um, commanding us, all right? Yahweh Bashmael Shai. And this all ties into the fear of the Lord, obeying Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, having respect and reverence for Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Matthew 22 and 8, then say if he to his servants, the wedding is ready, right? Kingdom of heaven. But they which were bidden were not worthy. Talk about what? Two thirds. So I'm going to read it again from the top. This is Matthew 22 and verse 8. It says, Then say if he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. So you're going to have men, and Lord willing, I hope and pray, you know, Abba Rathaza, I'm not one of those men because I came into this truth hoping to be saved. Well, let me rephrase that. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai called me into this truth, Lord willing, and I hope that I'm a part of the elect. All right? And I understand that, you know, you got to keep up the same diligence and you got to endure until the end to when Yahweh Shai come back or just by rejecting that RFID chip implant, which is the MOTB. All right? So I'm going to read it one more time. Matthew 22 and 8. Then say a fee to his servants, the wedding, the wedding represents what? You know, the kingdom of heaven is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. So you got men that's going to come into the truth and that's currently in the truth that are not worthy. And it's just a matter of time before the most high tweak their spirit and they start either bugging out or they become offended or some type of stumbling block happens to where the most high allows Satan to sift them out of the truth. All right. It says, go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So that is the job of an Israelite man that knows this truth. All right. Your job as an Israelite man is to what? If you are a prophet. And the thing is, don't try to use that excuse to say I'm not a prophet or I shouldn't push forth the gospel. Don't make excuses up. All right. Just do it. It's not about being the deepest. It's not about, you know, memory. It's not about none of that shit. You know, it's all about truth and sincerity and really proving to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai by your actions that you believe. All right. Spread forth this gospel any way that you can. Right. So it says bid to the marriage. So that's our job. You know, that's the ultimate way. Of displaying your faith by going out on the highways and byways, no matter where you're at in the world. And then, you know, you just preach, you know, you flow in the spirit, go into current events and link it up with Bible prophecy. All right. It says, um, so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. So you got bad dudes that come into this truth. All right. Yeah, they could be around for years. They could be around for, you know, um, one year, a couple of weeks, a couple of um, months, five years, 10 years, 15, 20. You know, that that don't matter. If you're not a part of the elect. It's just a matter of time before the most high tweak your spirit and you just fall out. You know, you go back into the world or you could become a scoffer. You know, you start switching the doctrine up. So you don't want to be that type of example. So it says both bad and good and the wedding was furnished with guests so it says um and when the king came in you know we know the king is Yahweh Shai and we understand that the scriptures for the most part is written in a parabolic you know way of um, writing all right it's not easy to be understood by your average person only the ones that have the holy spirit right so it says, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw that there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So you got guys that's like that. All right. It says, 
And he saith unto him, Friend, how, came, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? Because this proof is only for the elect, ultimately. It says, And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him, cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right? For many are called, but few are chosen. That's the thing. You know, you could be around for years. Just because you're around for years, that don't automatically make you a part of the elect. All right? Because there's a lot of examples for what we heard and what we see today. Dudes that been the truth 20 years. You know, 15, 14, 10 plus. Under 10 years. You know? It's all about being a part of the elect. All right? This is Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, I, this is Paul's epistle to the Israelites that were at Rome. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. So that's what you're supposed to do during this grace and mercy period. Having grace and mercy through the blood of Yahweh Shai doesn't mean that you willingly sin. All right. The law is still in effect, but. You know, the elect of the nation of Israel, you know, we're not judged according to the law or else we'll all be dead. The justification comes to what? Faith in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So that's what we do week in and week out. And if, you know, the weather is bad or whatever, you know, we do our indoor sit downs. You know, we do our, um, you know, our regular lessons. We do our live streams. You might link up with a brother. You might do um, a stream yard video. You know, that's like the new wave. You know, whatever you could do to, pre to um, present your body as a living sacrifice, right? It says, holy, acceptable unto the most high, which is your reasonable service. It's our reasonable service because we shall all be dead technically, pursuant to Isaiah 1 and 9. But through the blood of Yahweh Shai, you know, we're alive again, beginning with the elect, right? This is Psalm chapter 116 and verse 10. I believed, therefore have I spoken. So if you truly believe in this thing, man, you're going to speak about it. You know, it's going to be like a fire that's burning within you. You know, you know, like how when you, you're mad or you're angry and you have like that feeling of rage. Well, that's how the truth is. You know, you're going to want to get it out. It's going to have to come out sooner or later. You know, you don't want to be one of them people that when Yahweh Shai come back, you know, he says that I never knew you, meaning you don't receive salvation because you was ashamed of the gospel. You didn't want to push forth the gospel because you was afraid of how mortal men, women, and children would think of you. You know, your co-workers, you know, fuck the hell with them. You know, it's all about is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai please with me. So if you believe, you're going to speak. You're going to do videos. You're going to do live streams. You know, you're going to go out on the highways of byways. Who cares how people think of you? The hell with them. They're going to be destroyed. It says, I was greatly afflicted. So when you come into the truth, so rock the second chapter, right? My son, it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Acts 14 and 22 says what? Through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim El Shai. Because you have to be fully persuaded to understand that when you come into the truth, you will be hated. All right, your family, your friends, your your woman or women that you might you know be with down the line, you know even your children might hate your ass. You know, the world is gonna hate you. That's the point. Why? Because the servant is not greater than his lord, which is who Yahweh Shai, right? So I'm gonna read that second part again. I was greatly afflicted. So we gotta go through Jacob's trouble. We gotta go through the persecution that's gonna come upon all Hebrew Israelites pursuing to these executive orders you know project megiddo rex 84 the king alfred plan you know you're going to have your loved ones that betray you you know point you out when the government come looking for us right so you're going to be afflicted when you come into the truth you're going to lose things you know you're going to lose jobs you're going to lose women you know you're going to lose your kids but when it's all said and done, when Yahweh Shai come back, you will receive a hundredfold. You will receive an abundance of things, everlasting. All right. You think celebrities is living good? They don't. They don't got nothing on the elect when the kingdom of heaven is here. 
beginning when when Yahweh Shai come back. I'm going to end it off with this. This is James chapter 1 and verse 22. Because the topic is what? The fear of the Lord. Right? If you fear the Lord, you're going to do what Yahweh and Yahweh Shai commanded us to do. That's his faithful service, Lord willing. James 1 and 22. But ye, but be ye doers of the word. Now, by being a doer, what does that mean? You have to act out the action. All right? You say you repent. You say you believe. Well, speak about it. Tell the world how you feel through the scriptures and not through your own vain opinions. When we speak, right, we are representatives or ambassadors of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. So we have to speak according to what's written in the Bible. If you are angry about something, you have to support it with a Bible precept, right? It says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. You got a lot of dudes that make excuses up. Oh yeah, I see you guys preaching, but you're not doing what we're doing. Why are you not doing it? Why are you not praying to the Lord to put that spirit on you? Because you don't believe. That's that's what it is. You don't believe and you full of shit. And the Lord is going to destroy you. Because you're a hypocrite. Right? It says, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So you got a lot of niggas that's in this truth that deceive themselves. And you could be around for years. Cool, good for you. You know, let's, let's give you a hand clap. You know, congratulations. But the thing is, you stop believing after a while. You know, a stumbling block may happen or you get offended at another man. Now you're going to stop teaching. Come on, man. I'm going to read that last part again. It says deceiving your own self. So you don't want to deceive yourself. All right. It says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a, in a glass. And that's what a lot of these dudes, that's what they do. Because secretly, they're ashamed of spreading the gospel. They make excuses up. Or you got dudes that's out here and they're not even consistent. You know, they don't go out on the highways and byways, you know, when the weather is durable. They don't do that. You know, it says, yes, yeah, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, so Lord willing, you was edified by the lesson. Shalom.